Beware of the force of nature. It's something about animal behavior. Look at that Edwards fly! Soundtrack brought to you by Eli Drake. Is there anything you can't do? I mean, I didn't know you had a great singing voice. You too. have no idea. You're a stud. I but don't this know. is what I'm talking. Don't ever call me a stud again. That makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Right now, you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, along with my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. What a scumbag! What a scumbag! January 18th, 2019 episode, Kyle. It's our second show of 2019. I'm feeling good. I was also in the uh, attendance for this one as well. And uh, so, yeah, I got some stuff to say about it. I don't know what you got to say about it, but I'm going to talk about it. Oh! Oh, good for you. But uh, as always, Kyle, we start with the YouTube comments. Should we jump right in? Should we jump right into these amazing comments? Start out on fire this week, Trent, right into the lounges comments. I want to know uh, what the lounges is saying. Before we even do that, guys, I'm going to say this. Announcement to make. This last episode was our most listened to episode in the history of Total Nonstop Impact. Of the reviews Kyle and I have been doing. Uh, truly humbling. You guys are incredible. The numbers have been through the roof on this last week. I don't know what we did, Kyle. I don't know. Did you start paying off people? Did you start emailing them? What a scumbag! Sending out uh, greeting cards. I don't know what you did, but uh, this, this we almost doubled our numbers here, man. So that's, uh, that's something to be said. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. We couldn't have done any of it without the loungers, first and foremost. Thank you to the Impact Lounge for oh. the support, the views. I mean, our most viewed show and our probably our most commented on show. Yeah, so I, I can't even get to all the comments, but I love you guys. It, it was so humbling to see these numbers flying in all week. So uh, thank you guys for that. All right, let's jump into some comments, Kyle. Here we go. Here we go. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Adam Fairfax says, I think that the reason no old school TNA originals came out as a surprise is exactly what you said. They're distancing themselves from the stigma of TNA. I think the cold open showing highlights from the original TNA and the asylum was absolutely enough. The current roster, aside from an apparently part time abyss, has very little to no connection to what was TNA. I think that was the concept of where the company came from. From thus far, homecoming. But more importantly, several companies, the NWA, Aero Lucha, Ring of Honor, have all had the same building recently and drew fairly well. I think that's ultimately why for running the Tennessee Fairgrounds Sports Arena. Totally agree. That's what we kind of talked about last week. I think that's the idea, Kyle. It's officially distanced from TNA. What do you think? Good call there, Adam. Uh, yeah, I would say Adam's about right. I completely agree with Adam. Um, you know, they did you know, pay their respects to the past, you know, the old days. But at the same time, the message is clear. This ain't TNA. This is Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Like you said, he brought up a good point. The only real connection is a part-time abyss. Other than that, everybody's uh, pretty new, man. I mean, that's that's it at this point. So that's awesome. Other than the GWN footage and the old old stuff that they show for history's sake, it's pretty much a new company, man. So, uh, all right. Uh, Clay Rodriguez says, I think Impact needs a hardcore title. I don't know. What do you think? It hasn't been a hardcore title in a long time. What do you think about that? You know what, Trent? For as long as I've been podcasting with Impact fans, this has always came up. People always bring this up. I'd say at least once a year, somebody says to me, hey, man, wouldn't you like to see uh, an Impact Wrestling hardcore title? And you know what? I wouldn't. I feel like that trend that was a thing in you know the late 90s let's leave it there like i'm not a believer in sequels and reboots most of the time 
just leave it there, leave it in the past. Now, could they come up with a new concept that, you know, brings in some more of a no rules style, more of a hardcore style? Sure, but do I want to see a hardcore wrestling championship title in 2019? I don't think so, Trent. Yeah, I don't. I just think that the, the craze is on hardcore, an actual title of hardcore is, is done. I mean, it feels like uh, every time they wheel Tommy Dreamer out there, it's like it's almost like they're just it's like too much of a throwback at this point. They keep talking hardcore, but I don't think people respond to it like they used to. Everybody's too sensitive on chair shots nowadays. It can never really truly be hardcore if they brought it back. I mean, don't get it twisted, Trent. I love a good hardcore match. I love hardcore wrestling. I grew up on ECW in the early days of TNA and, you know, the WWF Attitude Era, all that stuff. But there's like a time and place for that. And now I like when feuds get to that point. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. like I like seeing Moose and Eddie Edwards kill each other. But, you know, as part of the story, when the story and the feud calls for it, but I don't want to see a hardcore division on TV every single week because it gets old real quick. And I think that's what happened back in the day. They just ran out of ideas. Yeah, when it's labeled hardcore, then you got a lot to deliver. You got you got an expectation you got to get to. But if it just turns into hardcore, like you said, if it builds up to it, that's a whole other story. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Whoopsie. Long Island's very own. Your buddy, your neighbor. Whoopsie. Strong Island stand up. Uh, he says the ultimate GW ultimate X GWN moment was too long, especially watching on Twitch since commercials are now GWN rewinds. I would like to see a full pre-show before the weekly episodes, especially since people are filling in to see Twitch or filing in to see Twitch before the episode, and maybe have having Alicia talk about what happened during commercials. I feel the same about ROH. I had my moment where I was all I wanted was wrestling, and I fell out of ROH in 2017. But I still go to their shows when they come to New York. I want to see a story, and I want reason why wrestlers are doing what they're doing. P.S. And if Kyle <laughs> and if Kyle walks out again like he did on the Homecoming review, I can fill in, especially for the Mexico taping, since I'm Hispanic and I can pronounce everything in Spanish. Hope your dad is okay, Trent. Whoopsie, thank you very much about my dad. And uh, Kyle, you got that? Whoopsie's already. Out. I got another Long Islander offering to jump in on this if you're out. Uh, and, it doesn't and he, even have to be like that. Whoopsie yeah. is a friend. He's a tribe member. He's he's a tribe brother. He he could come in for that episode and be the third chair. I mean, I can't promise that I'm going to make it. If I don't make it, he can fill in. But, you know, either way, I'd love to have Whoopsie on as our third guy for that show. So, Whoopsie, you have an open invitation. Let's get you on next week for the first Mexico show. Or the second I think one. Up to you. I think everybody's coming down to you hard for uh, mis mispronouncing Miguel constantly. I think, uh, you know, whoopsie's Hispanic and, uh, you know, Miguel <laughs> Trail's giving you shit for it. No, you <laughs> know what, Trent? Impact has got my back because on this episode this week, they removed his last name and he's just Trey now. So I saw that. So Impact saw has that, got yeah. my back. Maybe what, listen, listen to us thinking, you know what, it's it's too hard for, for the average non-Hispanic like Kyle to pronounce Miguel. You know, we're, we're for your average that. uncultured cracker from the suburbs <laughs> like myself, you know. We're going we're gonna to have to remove the guy's last name so guys like you can pronounce it. <laughs> but that's All where right. we can bring Whoopsie on. Bring some, uh, you know, Hispanic Latino flavor to the show. We need that, Trent. I'm going to let you arrange with Whoopsie. Go to his house. Grab a, grab a, a lunch. And you guys are, you know, neighbors. So go go hang out with Whoopsie and, uh, and, and figure it out. I don't right, know about that one, Trent. Whoopsie lives in Nassau County. That is the part of Long Island that Kyle stays away from. Oh, jeez. At least at night. All right, well, Whoopsie, you're going to have to come over to his place and, and give him some shit for making that comment. All right. Uh, this is one of the most, this is probably the most interesting comment of the week. And this, this one was really interesting, Kyle. It was made by this guy. And he says, I know this is a stretch, but what if the history of their teasing between Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan? It's a story in which Rich Swan accidentally killed his wife, Sue Young, and Sammy is the only person Rich trusted with his dark secret. Then Sammy supported Rich professionally by offering him work during these dark times. Later on, at some point in, in time, his wife came back from the dead, becoming the undead bride. Now in present day, Sammy and Rich continue to have a secret bond, plus a debt is owed, and that debt is sharing the X-Division title with OVE. Dude, that blew my mind. That storyline, that that comment, mind blown. What do you think? That's awesome. Who wrote that to us? 
That is uh, this guy. That that's uh, he's he's got an anonymous type of name. This guy, but whatever it is, man, that is one of some of the most compelling shit I've ever read. Just from a fan idea, and I really hope somebody in Impact hears this because that's amazing. Did we just get mind freaked, dude? That just that that is awesome. I really I would I would watch for that. No I, I think if. There's any way this guy could hit up somebody from Impact, or if Impact happens to hear our podcast, that is a good idea. I mean, I'm sure they already have the story laid out of where they're going to go, but that is a hell of an idea. Hell of an idea. Uh, this guy, thank you for that. All right, Lee Poulton says, Hi, Impact Lounge. Another good show last week. Uh, the only thing we need now is a second title this year. I think they might make a TV title. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, uh, I'm all for a TV title. They did it so wrong in the TNA days. They need to do a proper TV title, a proper TV title via WCW and NWA. The idea is it's defended on TV every week and it's a 10 minute time limit. So every week you get, you're getting a title match with a featured star. I'm all for a TV title, Kyle. What do you think? They just need to do it right. I don't want another King of the Mountain championship. I don't want no. another Legends championship. They, you know, they burn that bridge. I like how there's nothing in place right now. You know, they're taking time, you know, making sure that slate is nice and clean. And then if they could bring something out and, you know, do it right, I'm with it. That would be awesome. I'd love a television championship, Trent. 100%. 100%. Uh, The J-Rock Freak says, I didn't realize Kyle was around my age. Great review as always. Question, what do you guys think about the possibility of Eli creating a hardcore title or his own mid-card title? This could be used as a prop to get him a title shot eventually. We talked about the hardcore thing. I don't know about Eli creating his own. It kind of wouldn't really have the effect uh, needed if he just kind of created it. You know, it just kind of looks like he's just doing his own thing. It doesn't really, it doesn't really lead him to the title. That's my opinion. I don't know about you, Kyle. What do you think? Man, what is up with people in this hardcore title they idea? really want the hardcore belt, man. If people really want to get belt. hardcore. Maybe people miss that, though, you know? Maybe people are just kind of, like, sick of not having hardcore for a long time. But Impact know? gives us hardcore matches all the time. I, I see, I'd say at least once a month. That's the thing, though. They they don't brand it as hardcore. You you got to, like, brand it as hardcore. I mean, if you, you label it hardcore, people are going to, people are going to, you know, they're going to go to it as hardcore. Maybe that's what it comes down to. I, I feel start- like that's a step backwards, man. I, I'm not into it, but uh, you know what? I, Eli Drake is anti-hardcore, so like, how would he bring out his own hardcore championship? Maybe like Eli Drake gets to a point where he starts becoming delusional and starts calling himself the king of hardcore. I don't know. I don't know how you would do that. Uh, I want you to comment back and elaborate. Tell us a little further what you're thinking here, bro. That's why we need to go live someday, Trent. I'm telling you right now, Trent, by the end of the year, this is not going to be a pre-recorded podcast. We are going to go live, and there's going to be a phone number, and we are going to take calls from the Impact Tribe. We're going to change this whole format because there's only so much I can get from these people when they just write to us. We need a call in phone number so people like this can get on the line and explain what they're thinking because i don't know that doesn't sound good enough to me i don't know well you'll you'll be doing the uh, technical work involved in that i'll just That's be right. along for the ride and That's reaping right. all the benefits of everybody's adoration uh, you'll be paying for it on your paypal account perfect perfect that works out it's a good good system we got here Kyle. absolutely absolutely uh, right, you want to wrap up the comments there you got one more to close up before we uh, me, move along here a, Give me two, two more. Let me do two more because we got, we got lots, so many beautiful regulars here. I want to get a couple, of, two more regulars and one more, one new, one new That's comment. That's the How about problem. That? We have so many comments, Trent. Every week we do the podcast, and I'm happy with it. But I always go back to the comments and I'll see something. Oh, we missed that. You know what I mean? There's I know. So many comments. There's so many loungers. HSG Sabu says to me, Trent, can you do a karaoke song in the Sammy voice? Uh, I am officially taking requests. You guys call the song. I'll do it. I swear I'll do it. Call the song out. Let's get a vote going. Kyle, let's let's set up a vote system here. Yes. Somehow. Yes. Guys, tweet us uh, at We Talk Impact and let us know what song I should do. Let's do it. Uh, real quick. All right. A couple more. Colby uh, Cooper uh, says. Read this one oh. in the Sammy voice. Read this comment in the Sammy voice. That one right there? That yeah. the one about the karaoke? No, no. This this next one you're about to read. Oh, the next Just one. Oh, okay. T- turn All on right. the Sammy switch. All right. Here we go. Sammy switch going on. All right. Colby Cooper. He goes, so Anthem CEO Leonard Asper says on Twitter that Chicago and Philly are in conversation for impact tapings. Do you guys know of any venues they should try to hit in 2019? Because I'm Sammy Callahan, and we want to hit everything. Okay, so 
what they want. Thanks, Sammy. Appreciate that. Okay. Chicago and Philly, Kyle. Uh, Chicago, if you're hitting Chicago, Len Asper, if you're hearing this, the Logan Square Auditorium, do a partner show with AEW. I would love it out of personal reason. But if you're not doing it with AEW, the Logan Square Auditorium is the hotbed in the city to hit or the Cicero Stadium where MLW just did. So either one's great. Trent, you uh, work Phil- at AAW. That would be awesome. We could get you on TV. Maybe somebody could punch you in the face or something. Yeah, listen, my uh, I, I should, when we do the review, my uh, my buddy Nate, who's an AAW referee, made his TV debut at Impact on this episode. We're going to talk about that in a That's second. A good thing he is in Johnny Bravo. Oh, good. Thank God. I, I got a picture of Johnny getting knocked out, too. We'll get to all that. We'll get to all of it. All right, two more comments, guys, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to get to it here. HSG Sabu also said, keep it janky, fellas. Trent, Trent's PayPal for everybody. That's right. <laughs> uh, all right. McGuedro said, I need to get a big-time mohawk with blue stripes on each side so I can pay homage to Impact. McGuedro, I don't know if it's – I don't know if I can do that. Uh, all right. And let's see here. Guys, there's so many comments. Thank you guys so much for this. And uh, Chris Steele says he was able to see the ladder on TV, but he wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, yeah, more people said they could see that, though. But he also says, I think the best way to skyrocket Eli into the main event is to have him win a gauntlet battle royal to win the world title case and cash it in like Drew Galloway did in 2016, a.k.a. the cash in that had my eyes on impact ever since. Or Johnny could give Eli a title match to storyline and make up for their Bound for Glory main event 2017, which could lead to a double turn. All for it, man. Anything to elevate Eli. What do you think, man? I'm all for all of that. Team Eli for sure. 100%. All right. I'm going to close out with one more comment, man, and, and we'll, we'll get to the review. What do you say? Okay. I'm, I'm picking a good one. I'm getting, picking a good one. You know what? This, this is a, a, good, a good one here. Zachary Martin Show says, good fucking show. Good, great vibes. Good year already. Thanks, buddy. I think so. I think we're on to a good thing. I think we're on to a good start, Cal. 2019 has been good to us. Thank you for listening, Zach, and thank you for taking the time to comment. Please come back every single week right here Beautiful. on the Impact Lounge. Beautiful. All right, guys, again, so many comments. We couldn't get to all of them. Uh, otherwise, we'd just make a show about comments. But thank you, guys. Please uh, please keep leaving them. You know, we're, we're just picking them as we go along, and uh, we want to get to the review so uh, here we go, guys. No, no, you know what, Trent? Uh, that's not quite uh, real quick. Uh, I, I love my uh, little uh, Twitter exchange of the week, so I have a Twitter exchange of the week. But to coincide with it, Trent, uh, we're going to bust this out quick. I know you're in a hurry here, but uh, to coincide with that, I think we have a, a dummy of the week and a Twitter exchange of the week oh, all get to in it. one segment. Two at get once. Get to it, man. Get to it. All right, so Twitter is a lot like crystal meth because it's really fun to do and Oprah's on it. Trent, have you heard anything about Sanjay Dutt's weekend? All I know is that it sucked. And uh, gosh, the only only person who had a worse weekend than Sanjay Dutt was you, man. So, but uh, oh, but we'll get yeah. to that, I we'll guess. We'll get to that. I'm not happy about that, Trent. I'm still very traumatized. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, so this weekend, it appears as if Sanjay Dutt was taking a flight uh, using United Airlines, and uh, the plane landed for a medical emergency. Uh, the plane the plane was a United flight from New Jersey going to Hong Kong. And uh, the plane had a delay, took uh, took a stop, and it just appears that these people got stuck for 25 hours. About uh, there's so much to to get into here, Trent. And I, I thought we were just gonna get this news report and we'd be able to cover it like any other podcast or radio show would be doing. But it's overwhelming because this story got picked up by CNN. Sanjay Dutt was on CNN. Trent, do you know that? Was he on TV? Like I, I heard he was on. I know I saw the. I read the article where they interviewed him for like CNN.com. Yes, yes, he was on television. There's a, a video Man. of him talking, you know, on his on the plane into his cell phone. Insane. Uh, CNN to uh, t- uh, CBC. Looks like he's writing to Fox News. Uh, I mean, this was picked up all over the place. I mean. More than 14 hours, actually. I said 25 before. Uh, United passengers stuck on the plane for more than 24 hours in Canada. This is ABC 7 Chicago, Trent. Gee, I uh, should have seen that then, I guess. Uh, all right. Well I, well, I will go online and watch the replay. If uh, Sanjay Dutt, one of the one of the heads of Impact Creative, is on TV in Chicago, I should know about it. 
I should have I should have found a way to get. I was tweeting the guy. I was tweeting there. I was tagging people online. I, I'm surprised he didn't see it. I know he was busy doing sitting on the on the on the on the tarmac. But hey, I was hoping maybe I could break up his day. And he turned on total nonstop impact and said, "Let me see what these two idiots think about those last week's show." Since I'm sitting here for 20 hours, but uh, Sanja, I don't think he listened to the show. I think he was too busy getting getting CNN points yesterday, oh. not listening to us. Awful yeah. lot. You know what? At least Sanjay Dutt is uh, home safe. Uh, you know, at least he's okay. At least, you know, he got out of this mess and everything is all right. But uh, the Twitter exchange of the week would have to go uh, between Sanjay Dutt at Sanjay Dutterson and United Airlines at United. Uh, Sanjay really kept like a diary. Uh, I can't really give you a specific tweet, Trent, because Sanjay kept a diary of this entire thing as it went along. So please get on Sanjay's Twitter right now at Sanjay Dutterson, and it's very interesting. You have to read this. Uh, but the only person that might have had a weekend worse than Sanjay Dutt Trent, and who is also Dummy of the Week, is me. Yeah, you. I'm you Dummy of the Week. I'm you. I'm electing myself Dummy of the Week. Dummy. Yeah. You want to tell the people about this, Kyle? Do you want to you want to really uh, you want to tell people what's going on? I mean, I, I think I think it's you owe you owe the world a uh, an insight to this lesson here. Yeah, you know what? Let me just start this trend by saying there's nothing funny or cool about this. Uh, the only reason I would even share the story here on the podcast is, I mean, first off, the loungers are our family. We're very transparent with them. You know, we talk about our lives here on the podcast. We always mix that in with the impact wrestling talk. It's just what makes our show special. But I'm only sharing this story, Trent, because I want it to be a valuable lesson. You know, I made a very big mistake, and I I made the mistake so the others don't have to. If you ever find yourself in this situation, just remember what happened to Kyle from Total Nonstop Impact. Remember what happened to me, and you will never make that mistake again. And Trent, I am very lucky to be here talking to you right now. Wouldn't you say? I would would think so. I I almost... uh... We almost weren't here talking. How about that? Yes. yes Just go ahead and elaborate. Yes, yes. Uh, cousin Brian was about to get a big raise. He was about to get a big. Uh, uh, cousin big, Brian would have gotten full time. I big guess. Big promotion. Huh? Big old promotion. <laughs> but uh, all right. So. Dummy. Yeah. Let's go back to Saturday night. Saturday night. I'm with my buddies over at the usual uh, watering hole, the usual brewery that we hang out at every weekend. And uh, Trent, after a long night of drinking, slap nuts. I made. The one bad decision that nobody should ever make, and there's no excuse for it. I, I'm 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 old enough, I'm not a child. Uh, I made the decision to get into a car with somebody who I had been drinking with all night, and that Dummy. is the dumbest, yeah. stupidest, most inexcusable thing in the world. I deserve to go through a monsters ball match. I deserve Dummy. to get gravy yeah. trained. I deserve an ass beating. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you say, Trent? I fucked up. Yeah, you did. So I, I, I got in the car with somebody who was drinking, and uh, so we're <laughs> driving along, and it's not funny. I don't even know why I'm giggling. It's just kind of like a, a traumatic, like, hee-haw. Uh, we're going along the parkway, and uh, somehow when we go and uh, shift over into the right lane, you know, to get off the ramp, instead of getting off the ramp, my my buddy, my, my good uh, pal here, uh, the responsible driver, and I'm just as irresponsible for getting in the car. I can't stress Dummy. that. Yeah. You, you can never blame the other person. It, if you got in the car, you're stupid enough for doing Dummy. it. Uh, yeah. The driver, he hits the edge of the ramp, like the curb. And mm. instantly, first off, Trent, it's dark out. It's raining. It's cold. It's like the, it's slippery out. It's It's been raining all night, and it's freezing. The ground is damn near frozen. So as soon as we hit the edge of that curb, bang, the car spins out, totally spins out. Uh, both tires instantly destroyed, more than popped. I mean, the, the hubcap, the rim was destroyed. Uh, the car landed onto, like, the little island, really, just like the patch of grass that, you know, separates, you know, the regular road into the ramp that you're getting off of. And uh, had we crashed... Three feet further, Trent, we would have rolled into the woods and probably died. It, honestly, we would have rolled over into the woods and went downwards. It would have been very, very bad. I mean, 
I can't believe I did that, Trent. I mean, I made a bad call. I was drinking all night. What can I say? Uh, and that's not even an Coming. excuse. But yeah. from now on, Trent, I'm going to be taking Uber. Yes, thank God, man. Guys, guys, leave comments and let Kyle know how much he should take an Uber. You know, like, emphasize this, please. I think I think our fans love having us enough weekly, Kyle, that they don't need you risking your life and not being here every week with Trent, me. Trent, I learned my lesson, Trent. I am traumatized. You know how in movies, when something like that happens, your life flashes? That's true. That happened to me, Trent. That totally is true. true. Yep. Now, I've been in that situation with, uh, you know, with, you know, unfortunately, the car, uh, car issue where I was saved. But, yeah, your life does flash before your eyes, man. It is not... It is not a, uh, a fun experience at all. At all. So we could say, I am dummy of the week, Trent. Hit it. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah. Dummy, dummy. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> on that note, let's go on with the wrestling review, shall we? Oh, yeah. We still got a show to review, we still right? We have okay. a show to do. Good Lord. Okay. All right. Well, you know, thanks for uh, thanks for taking us on that emotional roller coaster there, Kyle. But here we go, guys. January 18th, 2019 episode of Impact Wrestling, Impact on Twitch, Impact on Pursuit. And uh, this was the second TV taping from the Nashville Fairgrounds, the Asylum. Kyle, I was in, in attendance, hard cam side the whole time. If people were looking closely, all they had to do was look at the top rope and look behind the top rope, center ring. There was me right there. That was your there was your favorite, your favorite one of two favorite hosts of your weekly impact review was sitting right there, guys, watching the whole thing. Oh yeah. I, I was pausing the TV, getting, you know, paused shots of that, you know, that See hunky, me there? Yeah. hunky face right on the TV. That's right. Was hair hot. was down. I was looking good. I was looking, looking good. Was good, looking, Trent. In all your was, glory. At the oh, like, asylum in Nashville. I was right there, man. It was fun. Living was your next, best life. I sure was. I, I was sitting next to a bunch of guys who uh, who listened to the show, man. It was cool. But uh, guys, this was this was a good one, man. I watched it on Twitch. Kyle, were you uh, a Twitch watcher or a Pursuit watcher this week? Do you, do you get Pursuit? I don't even know if I asked you. Do you get Pursuit? I do not. Uh, I'm kind of broke, and uh, it's unfortunately on uh, a higher tier package. And I have, like, the medium tier because I had to upgrade to get Pop TV. And yeah. now, <laughs> f- for me to get Pursuit, I have to get, like, some sort of, like, sports package that includes the hunting and fishing channels. And yeah, I can't afford it, Trent. So it's, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm on Twitch. I'm using Twitch. I like Twitch. I'm a Twitch viewer for sure. But speaking of Pursuit, Trent, uh, did you hear anything online? I don't know because... I don't get Pursuit. I didn't watch the Pursuit broadcast, so I'm really not asking you. I'm morally asking the loungers, uh, tribe members, loungers, let me know in the comments. Did you watch on Pursuit? And the reason I'm asking is I heard these rumors online that the Pursuit broadcast was slightly edited, like just slightly cut oh. at certain points, whether it be language or I, I don't know the specifics. That's why I'm asking. But I saw tweets, uh, you know, on Impact Friday of people tweeting about certain edits on the Pursuit broadcast opposed to the Twitch broadcast. So if anybody watched on Pursuit, uh, hit us up in the comments. We're going to link up with you and talk a little. We want to know uh, if there was anything, you know, that different. Or we'll tell you what we saw on Twitch and, you know, try to find any differences or something. Because I want to know. I'm very curious because we were told that the product was going to be edgier on Pursuit. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i curious now. Now, now I'd like to see where if we have any listeners who – listen on or watch it on twitch or watch it on pursuit and then maybe can go watch it on twitch after and let us know what the differences are because now i'm curious it's not like it's going to be the show in a different direction i mean it's just slight slight censorship slight edits uh and you could still get the the full uncut show on twitch i guess so it's not a big deal i'm just curious i want to know these things we need to know yeah we need to know we got we we have a a duty we talk impact we have a duty to report this to the people kyle we need to know we need the facts all right. So one thing I want to say before we start is there there is there is major Kyle major confusion on the hashtag of of impact lately. Impact has made the trending hashtag just hashtag #impact all capitals go with that. But the thing is initially back even before all the simulcasting started people were hashtagging impact on Twitch because of the Twitch stuff that's already broadcasting. 
And uh, when Pursuit started, they started in, you know, hashtag an impact on Pursuit, you know, as opposed to the impact on pop. And uh, there's a lot going on, man. Some people, there's three different hashtags going on. So when I'm tweeting, I'm putting all three of them because I'm like, I don't know who's going to see what. But I noticed even though impact is pushing the, the just impact hashtag that the impact on Twitch hashtag was the one that ended up trending all night. So it's one of those things where I think they really got to make a push to really let everybody know that, Hey, look, you got to use this one hashtag and that's it. Or, or what? I don't know. Maybe they like all three going on. Not sure. But, uh, I don't, I don't know I, which one to use Trent. I'll be honest though. <laughs> when I've been tweeting the past couple days, I'm using them all. I'm using impact. I'm using impact wrestling. Uh, I'm using impact on pursuit, using impact on Twitch. And believe it or not, Trent, there are people still using impact on pop. Oh, geez. It's still going. <laughs> if you click on impact on pop, people really? are still using that hashtag. I swear to God. We have any laundries doing it? Cause if you guys are doing it, you need to stop right now. This is your buddies, Kyle and Trent telling you. No more impact on pop. We have to let pop go. Pop we are is done. the social media police. Don't get yeah. caught slipping. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's jump in here. All right. The show kicked off hot. It was uh, KM with Fala taking on uh, Caleb Connolly, who I haven't seen in a long time. Caleb Connolly. I have not seen him in shit, man, forever. When was the last time you saw Caleb Connolly? I forgot I about him. Uh, at least uh, Cult of Lee a couple months ago. forgot about the guy, to be honest. Yeah, man, I, I, I saw him walking around during homecoming. He was just kind of hanging, not on the show, but he was kind of hanging around the audience. So I saw K, uh, Caleb walking around. But, um, you know, it just starts the match. You know, Conley attacked KM. They got, they, got, they got kicked off, but they cut backstage, and Brian Cage is on a rampage looking for Johnny. And uh, he's kind of killing everything in his path on this one. And um, he... Uh, he, <laughs> he's, he's, you know, he's attacking, you know, stage hands and crew. And he's saying, where the hell is Johnny? Give me Johnny. Where the hell is he? One of the guys he attacks, one of the guys he attacks backstage, my good buddy, Nate, referee, Nate Speckman. He was a referee for, um, AW and, uh, Sammy Callahan's promotion, Rockstar Pro and, and the wrestling revolver and, and warrior wrestling. He's a, he's an up and coming referee. He's a good pal of mine. He went down with me. And he got in because he's been trained by uh, OVE. He's, he's he's in their school, so he was able to get on backstage. And he got uh, he got killed by Brian Cage. That was uh, him, the one with the headset on. So he was the one who gets choked out at the end. Go, where's Johnny? That was that was Nate. But poor poor uh, poor Johnny Bravo, huh? Oh man. So yeah, they so Cage comes out, starts attacking her. He he takes everybody out, right? He takes Fala out. He takes KM. He power K F fives him on the ramp. And then he drill claws Johnny Bravo. What a scumbag! Johnny Bravo, what did he ever do? I I felt bad. I, I was sitting right in front when Johnny Bravo got taken out, and I, I watched the whole thing, man. Poor Johnny Bravo. I got a picture of him laid out on, on the ground. He he was out cold. But uh, he got Cage gets on the mic, demands Johnny. Johnny comes out, and then he, as soon as he comes out, he gets attacked by uh, Cross and Moose. And then Cage kind of just watches them take him out. They retreat. Cage drags Johnny back in, and then he gets blindsided by Cross and Moose. And then uh, they hit Cage with a six spear, and Im- Impact and Cage are laid out. Cross and Moose stand tall. So this is this is like a huge lover's quarrel, man. There are so many people hating both guys who are chasing the title, and Johnny's in the middle of it. Moose has came, come back to back Cross. What the hell is going on, Kyle? I Tell love me. it. Uh, the booking style they're currently uh, awesome. you know, using so in the good. show. Um, usually, traditionally, you know, they put a certain amount of people in a storyline or a feud and, you know, leave it at that. The way Impact is uh, using everybody on the roster uh, in these storylines from this one, you know, from the Cross, Johnny, Cage, Moose stuff to uh, all the Undead Realm stuff with, you know, uh, Rosemary, Allie, uh, Sue Young, Kira, uh, Kira Hogan. Uh, I love how they're able to do that. Yeah. I, I just love that usually you have, you know, one guy chasing a belt and the focus is on the one guy. Dude, we got two guys chasing a title. And both both of those guys hate each other. They hate the champion. You we got one guy. This every week, Trent. Every it's single amazing. week. How they have this show where everybody is presented. Not I don't want to say everybody's equal, but it's like anybody could go up to that spot at any moment. It's awesome. Here's the idea, right? It doesn't you put gotta, people in labels, you know. It doesn't put people in boxes, you know. Absolutely. And the idea is you gotta keep people hot. Like, what? What? Okay, just hypothetically, let's say Cage goes down with an injury. 
then what? You're screwed. Your whole main event picture is screwed. But no, in this case, you've already lit up Killer Cross. And you've already lit up Moose. In in the event that something happened at Cage, you missed a flight, he goes down, God forbid something happens, you got two guys lit up and they can go right in. They can go right in because you've now made two more credible guys in the mix. That's the idea, man. It, it's it's brilliant booking to make sure that everybody is you got you got you got not just one, we got more than one person ready to go at all times. That's how any level should be main event, mid card tag. Everybody should be ready to go at all times where it makes sense to plug people in and out. Uh, and everybody's credible. That's the idea. That's the idea. So, you know, awesome. Trent, though, I actually yeah. have a, a commentary note from this whole uh, first uh, segment match, if you will. Uh, Go ahead. The bastards, the balls on Josh and Don. I have to call them out. Now, I love Josh and Don. I am a huge Don Callis fan. I'm a huge Josh Matthews fan. I think uh, they do the best uh, play-by-play slash color commentary anywhere in wrestling right now. But mm-hmm. I have to call them out on something, Trent. Go ahead. In this match, they plugged the fact that KM and Fala came out with a Christmas book, which all of you can get at Amazon.com. It is called Santa Claus is Coming to Brawl, and he's bringing KM and Fala Ba. You can get this book right now on Amazon.com. Now, it's kind of an unauthorized Impact, uh, you know, thing. It's it's not an Impact-related project. You know, Impact wrestlers are, in a way, independent contractors. And this is just a project that I guess they took on, you know, themselves, just like how recently Eddie Edwards came out with a book. Uh, they came out with a children's book. It's a Christmas book. Santa Claus is Coming to Brawl. God, do you believe that K.M. and Fala Ma are published authors? <laughs> They, they, put out, come on. Don't me. they put out a Christmas book at the end of 2018. Really? A children's comic book? Well, considering Fala Ma has a vocabulary of one word and Cam is a functional idiot, I can only imagine what that book must sound like. Why are they mentioning the Christmas book now? That's messed yeah. up. I can't figure that out. What was the point of you mentioning it Those now? Those bastards. I, it, it's kind of like, hey, why are we even talking about this now? Because you guys missed the boat on getting these guys some extra sales. But... No, God, they didn't. Have- no, you know what? I love Christmas. I love Christmas all year round. Well, we'll do Christmas in July here on the show in the summer. We'll, we'll bring Christmas back again. And hey, you could order it now to have it for next year. Have it ready to go just in case it sells out, you know? So please pick that up, Impact Lounges. Santa Claus is coming to Brawl, and he's bringing KM and Falaba available on Amazon right now. I'll tell you what. Uh, thankfully, it did sell pretty well because it was sold out when I went to go look for it. So hey, man, that's awesome. Good for our boys there. You know how much I love KM and Fala. Uh KM did tweet something today, though, Kyle. I'm going to put this out there before we move on. He says, I only have 45 days left on my current contract. And he put that that thinking emoji. And I'm like, don't you dare. Don't you dare take away this this from me, man. Don't you dare. That's all I'm saying. I can't. I cannot lose these two on, on my weekly television. No, cannot. I, I want that feel-good moment, Trent. We deserve that moment. I want KM uh, and Fala to get the gold. We oh, need that. Can't wait. We deserve can't wait, that. Man. They deserve that. You can't yeah, get I, rid of KM and Fala. You cannot let KM go. They and I know people are, you know, probably in the comments like, "Well, they're not an important part of the show." Yes, they are. They are a very important part of the show. They bring us that feel-good comic relief every week. I love KM and Fala, and I don't want to see them go anywhere. No, nah, me either, man. Absolutely. I uh, I, I think they got to stay, man. How Hopefully many established tag teams does Impact really have right now, honestly? Outside right, of mean, LAX and OVE, what's really going on? Yeah, and dude, we, we, Brothers, and course. Daisy Hit Squad. Oh, we actually got a, quite a few tag teams Scott, oh, for a two-hour show. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like they're not. No, no, but Trent, the tag team division isn't. Um, it doesn't feel as strong outside of LAX, Lucha Brothers, OVE. I feel like KM and Fala, they aren't in too many tag team matches. Daisy Hit Squad, they aren't in too many tag team matches, you know? They don't, yeah, feel, they don't feel like contenders all the time. No, it's true. We we got we got to keep them around. We got to keep establishing them. What we've what they've done with Cam and Fall in the last year has been fantastic. Let's keep that up. I I, uh, this right. is, I keep saying it, Trent. We need to renovate Explosion. We're in the Twitch era now. This is yes. perfect. The Twitch era is a perfect time to make Explosion feel like you know important again. Yes, I, I that's a really good point, man. I think you know I'd like to ask the tribe here too. If Explosion was was kind of redone and made more like appointment TV via Twitch. Let's say, you know what? It's going to be on Twitch on this day. Would you be more inclined to watch it? Because right now, what? It's only on the GWN. If it's not airing in your um, international market, it's on the GWN, which is where I catch it. But, dude, if it was on Twitch, it would feel more appointment to me. 
would you guys watch Explosion more if it was on Twitch? You know, I'd like to put that out there. I, I think I would for sure. But uh, all right, Kyle, moving on. One thing I wanted to note here, I had in my notes in my run sheet here, was that Josh was in between commercial breaks on um, the Twitch broadcast on Skype, just doing a little hype. He was at home chilling. He has a very, uh, he was in a very dark room. It was kind of, kind of seductive almost. That you know, you, you'd go from a, a brightly lit <laughs> asylum to Josh coming at you very seductively. It was, uh, it was, it was kind of hard. It was warming. It was like being there with Josh. It was kind of like, Hey, I'm watching impact with Josh, <laughs> but, uh, he was, uh, reading comments, you know, from the, the Twitch feed, which is, which is lightning speed Twitch comment feed. He was reading some comments. He was hyping up the next segments, hyping up what we just saw. It was really cool, Kyle, because he was basically watching with us. I mean, he, he was there at the show, but he was watching what we're seeing. And I thought that was really cool. He was even telling us how, uh, Certain wrestlers were popping in and out, like Sammy and Rosemary and Allie, LAX. They jumped in and out of the Twitch uh, convo. But I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was really cool. It was really interactive because uh, while the Pursuit's doing commercials, Josh is with us on Twitch letting us know, hey, what's going on? All right, Ethan Page versus Eddie Edwards. Eli Drake is out on commentary on this one. Uh, it was hard to concentrate fully on the match because Eli on commentary is incredible. And... Uh, Huge brawl. I mean, this this is a pretty wild brawl. I as I've mentioned before, I'm extremely impressed with Ethan Page. The year in uh, makeover year he's had in his style is fantastic. He's uh, he's just so damn good. But um, Eli on commentary, you catch this, Kyle. He, at one point, he started singing the Eddie Edwards or the the Wolves' is Force of Nature song. Did you hear this? Beware of the force of nature. It's something about animal behavior. Look at Eddie Edwards fly! Soundtrack brought to you by Eli Drake. Yeah, you know what, Trent? I'm act <laughs> I actually queued that up in the intro. Uh, you know, you didn't hear it. it. You know, not going through your headset, but uh, at the intro of the show, that's where we're opening up before uh, we get into the Hemi intro as usual. But oh, I, I had to open up with that. E Eli Drake singing the hits, man. So good. So damn good. <laughs> I was laughing so hard at that. I could but, listen uh, to Eli Drake talk for hours, Trent. Hours. I'm, I'm hours. telling you, man. This guy could get over on talking. He doesn't even need to wrestle. Uh, what He's really so uh, got a good laugh out of me is when uh, Josh mentioned to Eli that uh, Don is the creator behind Ultimate X, and uh, Eli was just like, oh, he's a genius, isn't he? <laughs> he's just he's just so natural the way he says it man he's Hysterical. just so natural everything he says is so funny uh, eli drake is just one of those guys like he's mastered the art of being a wrestling talker he has I, mastered his chatterbox one of the all-time greats i'm telling you I, he's on I that swear. mount rushmore of all time i swear man if they just strapped the rocket to him he could be like the, the him he could be impacts rock i'm I serious have a fucking I, serious question here trent and it's a relevant question i know we ask it all the time but i'm putting emphasis on it right now because i'm putting this up as a headliner post like a quick cut like we we love to do uh why hasn't eli drake gone back to the top of the mountain he's proved himself every way he has the look he can go in the ring he's the best talker on that microphone he's the funny charismatic he plays off the audience better than anybody. This guy literally, he just shines as an all-time great professional wrestling talker. Why isn't he carrying the company? Why isn't he our rock? He deserves to I, be. I my Here's my theory. You guys can tell me what you think of this. Lounge, tell me what you think of this. I think what happened was he that contract negotiation where he did resign. Every, when that happened, I feel like everything kind of, I think I feel like everything kind of got mixed up. That's where everything kind of fell to, not fell off, fell to the wayside a little bit. I feel like they were, they were, they didn't want to push him too hard. They had tapings involved. They had to fill in taping time and that, um, and that during that time they couldn't really push him much and they had to kind of tweak his, his push and they, they had to put him in such a place where. As the tapings went on, when they redid his contract, they had to kind of set him in, in line on a different path while they lit up other guys. And ever since then, we've been playing catch up because that was what July, like July ish, right? July August, and we've been kind of playing catch up since. 
He's still we, a very entertaining, uh, usually the funniest, most entertaining segment on the show. Usually the best promo on the show every single week, consistently. But we haven't seen him go back to the top and get the Impact World Heavyweight Championship that everybody is pulling for. We want Eli you. Drake. I'm telling you, I think it's ever since they had to light up the, uh, they had to change his his course during the contact, not the contract stuff. He's never been able to get caught up. It's almost like he's been behind on tapings and, and since they put him into another path and that's it. They, they lit up other guys in the meantime. So now I think what this is, it's at least the thing with Eddie now is a featured role and it's bringing him out and it's putting him in a place where like, okay, we can build him back on a solid path here and get him back to something and then take him into a different direction. That's what I think, man. I think he just, he, he just got put on a different road after that, during that contract stuff, man. And it just, it just threw things off for him. But uh, let me just wrap up the result on this one. So uh, Eddie, you know, Eddie's psycho. Eddie's going nuts. He nails uh, Ethan Page with a kendo stick and gets DQ'd. So Ethan Page picks up the DQ win on this one. And then Eli gets on the mic afterwards, and he, he starts berating Eddie. He starts questioning Eddie. He says, hey, you know, you, you can't even control your hardcore urges. He says, you remind me of a guy, uh, you know, you used to be a champion, but you know, now you're hardcore and you're not. You haven't, he's like, when was the last time you were in the, in the title picture? When was the last time you even wore the green tights? Like you're wearing jeans. You know, and he goes, you should go back to the old Eddie Edwards. So he, uh, Eddie kind of left there thinking, you know, he was kind of like confused. Like, oh man, maybe he's right. But uh, the first thought I had here, Kyle, was who do you get to show him that way? Maybe uh, Davey Richards? I don't know. Eh, first thing I thought of, you want to show Eddie what it's like to be a champion? Maybe you bring back the guy who he, uh, who kind of showed him that or helped him show him that way. You what have, do you think? You have to. I mean... It- it's it's weird because think of it like this: his old partner comes back, you know, with a "What's gotten into you? What happened to you?" type of moment. But at the same time, Trent, remember who Davy Richards was when he left during his last run. He was the one that got nasty and more into that's right the spirit that Eddie is in now. That's true. Davy kind of drove him to this, but even more reason why Davy can come back and say, well, "What you know? This isn't you." You know, what happened between us is, is done. You know, maybe I drove you to this, but now I, I regret doing it. You know, you're my friend. We did this and that. It, it could be cool. Davey is someone I'd love to see again on TV, man. I'm a huge Davey Richards fan. What about you? Same, and it's just a very important part of uh, the story of Eddie Edwards. And, I mean, just impact in general. I feel like we need Davey back. I feel like we need a Wolves reunion. I really do. I would love it, man. I Listen. I'm a David Richards, you know, I'm not a tall guy. I'm 5'7". I'm not a tall guy. And uh, Davey Richards was that guy for me that, you know, I think he's like my height. But he should, Dave Richards was that guy to me that, like, man, you could be 5'7 and be a complete badass. Like, tough guy badass, man. And that's why I always loved Davey. And I thought Davey was very credible. So you can always insert him into a story like this. So Instant I, credibility. I have a good Davey story for you, Trent. Uh, Tell me. I met, it's not good. It's pretty embarrassing. But, uh. I met Davey at the first ever Pop TV tapings, the the first set on Pop. I was there for the debut and that following set and that one night only. Um, So it was at the Sands Casino in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So for this week, me and my buddies, you know, we're staying at the Sands Hotel where, you know, meeting all the wrestlers because everybody is staying in the same hotel room so everywhere we go down every hallway going to get food going to the bathroom this will make sense in a second uh running into all these wrestlers it was cool it was the ultimate fan experience uh at the wrestlers expense i'm sure they would have uh, appreciated a little more privacy not you know having to run into fans every second but hey it was it was cool for us it was cool for the fans and uh so me and my buddy cody were walking uh, at one point in the casino and we're just adventuring, just, you know, checking out, you know, because this place is huge. It's a huge building. You yeah. Could, you could go exploring for the entire day. And uh, so we go down this one hallway and we see Davey. And of course, you know, I instantly start, you know, hey, man, nice to meet you. You know, thank you for, you know, all the hard work and entertainment, blah, 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 blah. Usual, usual shtick when you meet a wrestler. And uh, he shakes my hand, shake, shake Davey's hand is what it is. Davey walks away. And then we... Uh, proceed to go down the hallway that he came from and it occurs to me that Davey came out of the bathroom. I'm going to be honest with you Trent, 
Uh-huh. And his hand wasn't very wet. I did not feel like a freshly washed <laughs> hand on Davey's hand. So I shake Davey Richards' hand, and then I, we figure out that he came out of the bathroom. I think I shook Davey's hand when he got out of the bathroom, and I don't think he washed his hands, Trent. What a scumbag! Oh, Jesus. Davey, Davey's uh, he's not a hand washer? Hey, oh, I'm, I'm just telling you. I, I met the Wait. guy when he was coming out of the bathroom. I don't know what he was doing in the bathroom. Who knows? He but was fixing it, his hair. Maybe, maybe he dried his hands. Exactly. It doesn't mean that he was handling himself below the belt. It really doesn't. He's, but he's a he's a medical professional, Kyle. You know that, right? The guy is a medical guy, professional. Now, I'd say I'm sure he washes his hands. I'm, I'm sure he practices, say. you know, top level hygiene, personal <laughs> hygiene. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he's very sanitized. But yeah. it was just a funny thing. Like my buddy Cody's like, "Oh, you shook his hand. I didn't. You you got Davy's piss on your hands." <laughs> awesome. you know? All right, Kyle. Always wash your hands. Never forget that. All right, from there, we go to the OVE cam, the black and white cam, with my boy, Sammy Callahan. And uh, he's saying it's time for Rich Swan to come home. Come home to Ohio. You know, so he's got he's, he's, he's threat telling Rich, you got to come home to Ohio. And tonight, OVE goes to war with their rivals, LAX. So uh, he's hyping that, that Rich Swan thing, man. That compelling Rich Swan story that this guy uh, posted on, uh, on our comments, which I would love to have happen. Not sure if it will, but... Uh, Man, that would be awesome. But whatever Sammy's holding over Rich is, is about to boil over very soon. But uh, You know, Trent, yeah, I mean, though, i got to say that lounger tainted it for me because I can't stop thinking about the dead wife theory. It's in my I head. Know. Dude, how crazy would that be? I mean, Could that'd... you imagine if they actually go in that direction and Dude. this guy <laughs> said it to us first? Dude, I, I, my thing is... I mean, yeah, it's an anonymous uh, screen name too. This guy. I mean, who could that? Who could this guy be? That could be. That could be Sanjay Dutt for all we know. Maybe Sanjay was on that plane leaving comments, messing with our know. heads. Maybe he's like, "Hey, what do you guys think about this?" Uh, that, that, it, that's a big, big uh, theory and assumption there, Trent. I don't know, but I just can't get that dead wife theory out of my head. That guy changed this entire viewing, this entire storyline <laughs> for me. He did. He Dude, did. I. This guy. I would love your takes on more storylines. Seriously, that is that was cool. All right. God, we go from there to the Rascals, man. They're back there hanging out down the street. Same old thing you did last week. They're back there smoking out, and uh, they're going through the circle, you know, the, the table circle as they did in the 70s show. Oh, let me put Land that on- music on that we played last week, that, that, uh, that Cypress Hill. There we go. Continue. And uh, Trey is in a suit. Trey Miguel is in a suit. And they go, uh, he, they say, what, what are you doing in a suit? And he's like, homecoming Trey. You know, good trade. He also wears the, he's, he's a fresh prince of midair, so he's he's wearing a suit, man. He's he's a homecoming homecoming suit and or homecoming king and or prince. But uh, they're goofing around. The rascals having a good time. This kind of reminds me of what you probably do on a Friday night, Kyle, when the uh, impact's on. This kind of seems like it could be a camera in your uh, in your living room. But hey, not to divert from that hey, too much. That, that's none of your business, Trent. <laughs> none of your business what I'm doing in my extracurricular activities. However, you know what? I, I got to say, uh, Trey is wearing his crown and his getup from homecoming still. Uh, it's been two weeks. That was joked about here. But you know, I, I, I feel for the guy, you know, because, you know, Trent, did I ever tell you my best friend banged my prom date on prom night? Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> what? So I, I know how <laughs> Trey feels to get screwed at homecoming. I know what that's like. Uh, my senior prom. My best friend banged my prom date that night. That night at the Wait. after prom party. That happened. What a scumbag! Are you still best friends? We're still buddies. It's it's weird. It's not like, you know, it, it's a story for a different time. If you want to hear about it, loungers, Kyle's prom story, I'll tell what? you guys about it next week if you want to hear about it. But, yeah, dude, my best friend that I'm still best friends with, that I... I you met him, that Cody that I'm always talking about. Cody, the guy who was yeah, with me at the David Richards thing. He was with me at, uh, what was it, Bound for Glory. Uh, Cody banged my prom date the night of senior prom. And he doesn't, Cody, Cody's from Florida. He didn't even go to high school with me. He moved to my town. So he was at our after prom party as like a, a civilian, as a as a bystander. He didn't even go to prom with us. Wait, were you guys best friends at the time? Yes, yes. I, I, we're playing beer pong, and uh, my prom date disappears, and Cody disappears. And it, it was uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it another day. If the loungers want to hear about it, because it's going to take oh. us too far. Your family's waiting for you, Trent. you got stuff to do. Let's continue the review. But loungers, if you want to hear Kyle's prom <laughs> story, we'll I talk vote about it this. next week. So Trey, I vote for this. I, 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 vote I feel for Trey, this. though, to get screwed at the homecoming dance. You know, I know how oh, that feels. Man. I know how that feels. That crown oh. on his head was like the, the unused rubber I had at the end of the night, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> I know what it's like. So then move along here, Trent. How about this? Can I can I interject my own? I, I'll even throw us. We'll, we'll, we could even do a side pod of prom stories. I ditched my prom date at the prom and went and partied at a different party because she was being a bitch. I ditched her and took off. Well, so it, we could talk. There's a good we, chance my friend Cody came and banged your prom date she, that he night might too. Well have, might he as might as well, as well have. have to. He flew to Chicago and took care of that too. He what was that have. like 99 when he was in like second grade? He very well could have happened. It was it was ninety nine. Good guess, good guess. Yeah, that, was good, that was a real good guess, Kyle. Let me give you that one. That let's really let's move guess. along here, Trent. We're doing our thing here and going off the rails. That's it. The off the rails sound bite. Every time we go off the rails, <laughs> is the new thing here. Off the rails. Allie with Sue Young taking on Jordan Grace with Kira Hogan. Uh, when the match begins, the the lights mysteriously flicker on and off, and they kind of look confused in the audience when we were there. I just I literally thought it was a light error. And I was like, oh, man, maybe just lights, you know, dimming out or something. But uh, on TV, the girls reacted to it. And I was like, oh, OK, that was part of the show. So uh, that worked out pretty good. A lot of back and forth. Um, you know, obviously, they Jordan is is the powerhouse. They are really they are really pushing her hard, man. Like she's going to she's just going to be this leader of the knockouts division. Uh, a lot of back and forth. But uh, Grace countered a code code breaker. And turned it into a pump handle sit down slam to take the win. So Jordan pins Allie. But then afterwards, Kyle, this is where the fun happened. Now, afterwards was pretty cool. Afterwards, uh, Sue Young gets up and she starts reaching her hand out to Allie. And she's in the middle of the ring. And Allie's looking kind of bummed out and kind of like, uh, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I let you down kind of look. So they pause on this look where uh, Sue's kind of got her hand extended to Allie. Lights go out, they come back on, and Rosemary's in that place. And she comes right back, and it's like Allie freaks out and, and goes back. I'm going to say this. Even live, I want people to know this. Live, that I, I didn't even see that coming. I could not even tell where the switch happened. I was right. I was 30 feet from the ring. I couldn't even see that coming. They, they did it so good, man. What you saw on TV was how quick it happened live, too. I thought it was awesome, man. What would you think? Dude, I've been putting this this storyline over every single episode. You know I loved it. And you know, Trent, I got to say, a lot of you, and I'm talking to you, not just the loungers, I'm talking to you, Trent. I'm pointing my finger at you right now. You guys yes, poo-pooed and naysayed Jordan Grace. And every single episode I since, I like her a little more. I, You know, I'm, I'll admit that you're right. She's got a I bright sure future, did. pal. You better get on the Jordan Grace train. I did. I, I was real down on her. Uh, after seeing her live a few times, I was never a big fan, but she's she's winning me over little by little, man. She really is every week. Uh, they're booking her strong, and uh, that pump handle slam is pretty cool. That that finisher, uh, man, that that pump handle driver just drilling Allie right on her head, I, brutal, brutal. It was brutal, real and, good. You move. know what? You have to realize, Trent. Take this into account. Jordan Grace signed a two or three year deal, and now uh, you got to have that perspective now that. When you hear somebody signing with Impact for two to three years, because that's been the recent uh, trend, I feel like, they're locking people in, expect great things out of those people. Expect great things out of Jordan Grace. But the people that aren't signing deals and are just getting booked you know, per taping, don't expect big things out of those people down the line. That, yeah, that's I mean, how that's I'm a good thinking. Point. You got to look at the people who are, who are invested long run, long term, and... Uh, you know, build off of them, man. So absolutely, Jordan Grace is there for the long term. So that's pretty cool. That is really cool. But I, I love this segment, man. I loved how Rosemary just appeared out of nowhere. I thought that was really neat. Uh, like I said, it, live, it was just as quick as you saw it on TV. That was pretty much live to tape, man. It was really, really smooth. I didn't see it coming. No, no, we were all like, holy shit. But um, Trent, I don't mean to sound like a perv here, but I just got to say it. Uh, Rosemary looks hot and thick. That new look. Woo. That is she a new look, right? good. Yeah, she, she definitely, put on some weight. She definitely put on a couple LBs. I think she never looks sexier. Man, she looks great, man. I agree with you. I think uh, there were some people dogging her. You know, obviously, you're going to get that on, on wrestling Twitter, which is terrible. But uh, I think she looks great, man. There, it's, this new look is cool. I, it's it's like, I don't know. It's just like, like a fine wine, man. Get like better it. with age here. Like it's it. looking nice. I like the new I like look. It. I like the new Rosemary. I'm excited to see where her career goes and impact from here on out. I mean, she's such she's such a staple. That I did notice she's she's wearing a pretty hefty, uh, pretty hefty leg brace, that knee brace that I would call it the uh, the bionic knee, like St like Steve Austin used to have on when that those knees were bad, man. That really huge knee brace, 
She had one of those on. I know. Um, I don't know. I, I think I don't know if those those are pretty permanent injuries. Those are ones you wear to really, you know, just protect yourself going forward. I did notice that though. It's on her gear. So uh, she blended it in pretty good, but it's definitely there. So wish not her, sure what it means. Wishing her the best with that, you know, health Hopefully, and yeah. you know, recovering and everything. Ho- hope, Absolutely. Her, wishing her the best. Absolutely. Uh, from there, Kyle, we got the big reveal of the global talent search by Scarlett Bordeaux. The big reveal. This has been going on months. I think four months, five, six months. And um, this was it, man. She was Scarlett's there laying in her hotel room looking, looking really, really nice. And... Uh, She's the big reveal is drum roll, please. Scarlett's winner of her global talent search is herself. Herself. Scarlett Bordeaux wins. People She's called like, this, Trent. I'm telling you, I saw a lot of people in our really? comments and in tweets uh, over the past couple weeks. At least two or three people personally to us guessed that Scarlett was going to be her own winner of her own talent search. And I'm going to go back and find out who those people were. Find and, that. Uh, try, find to, that sure. try to reward them because they called it. I didn't see it coming at all. I didn't see it coming at all. I, I'm surprised it was. <laughs> I mean, her justification was great. She goes, who else can live up to this? You know, I'm going to manage myself. I'm going to go into, I'm going to start wrestling. I'm going to get in the ring. So she kind of, you know, tied it back in. I know some people were bummed out. They're like, well, what was the point of all that? One guy online I saw made a good point. He goes, you had uh you had all this time to to make it more compelling, but uh, you went with the obvious or went with the kind of the easy out. But I, I disagree with that, Kyle. I think it was nobody saw it coming, and that's why people are pissed. I I always felt like when when uh, fans can't see anything coming, that's when they get upset, and that's when they make a big deal about it. And because when they when they're wrong, they're like, "Well, that storyline sucked." Yeah, but then it's at like, the same time, when like the booking makes sense on like Homecoming, we get people in the comments saying this show is too predictable. What do you want? What do you what people do you want, want, man? What do you people what want? What do you want? Yeah, I mean, it's like never satisfied. I mean, never. Like, rest, wrestling Twitter is terrible, as we know. It's it, it the could worst. Be, it could be a toxic dump. It's the you know, armpit of, of society. For sure. All right. From this Kyle, we got to one of the featured sh- uh, matches of the show. It was Brian Cage taking on Moose. This was one of the best matches I've seen on TV. Uh, I mean, this is uh, one of my top matches. I know it's real early in, early in the year, but this was such a good TV match. Such a good match, man. So much back and forth. Tons of back and forth. Moose looked fantastic in this. I even tweeted during this, Kyle. I even tweeted out and I said, excellent match. Moose, Moose gets better and better every week. Moose tweets, quote tweets me, Kyle. Quote t- tweets me and says, shut the fuck up. I'm a guy. I'm a fucking legend. Is what he says. That's what he says to all of all of his fans. And the likes are pouring in on that one. Pouring Trent. in. Last time I checked, uh, within like two <laughs> hours of him putting it up, there was over 100 likes. He put you on the the spotlight, blast. There, Trent. Put blast. you on I mean, blast. You got blasted by Money <laughs> Moose. How does that feel? Uh, you know, I felt honored. You know, I, I also, this, I also. This guy blasts you on social media and gets massages from your girlfriend at Impact uh, shows. How do you feel, Trent? <laughs> I, I felt Moose very is used. flexing on you. He's, I felt cheap. I felt cheap. I said, "Look, I gave you your own personal nurse at AEW, who also worked on him at uh, Bound for Glory." I said, I, get, "I brought you a nurse. That's a boy. She helped right. you out. She helped you out. And uh, and this is the thanks I get. I compliment you. And I, I, I got I got cucked. This was terrible. God, I got cucked. This is oh, awful, man. God. In my ass. <laughs> In my ass. Awful. In my ass. <laughs> awful. Awful." But what a match, Kyle! What a back and forth, uh, phenomenal match this was. Uh, these two, these two guys are behemoths, man. They're huge, huge dudes. They went, they went for a good, God, it meant, you know, at least twelve minutes. It was solid all around. Definitely a a very, very um, a good storytelling match. What do you think about it? I mean, I really loved the match itself on this one. Really enjoyed it. I'm with you, man. This is the show stealer. As much as I love, uh, you know, LAX and OVE, this was the big match of the night. I thought so. I, I thought this, this, this in my heart, looked... was the main event. In my heart. Yeah, I, I, I felt it should have been. I felt that uh, this one definitely had the, uh, the main event, uh, the main event feel to it. It was, it had big fight feel, man. So I liked about it. it. Had a real big fight feel to it. This could, this could be a pay per view match. So, um, two guys that can really get the best out of each other. You know, sometimes Trent is wrestling fans. They'll put a match together, and it'll just come across to us that these guys really have no chemistry with each other. 
But this was an example of the exact opposite. These are two guys that you can put in a program and you can get a lot of matches out of. This was fantastic. This was Absolutely. the main event to me. 100%. 100%. I, uh, I, I really liked it a lot, man. So, yeah, Cage picks up that win. He took, uh, took out Moose with a drill claw, which is no easy feat. Moose is a big guy, so he took him out in the drill claw. I, I loved uh, that spot where uh, Moose, uh, you know, hit his uh, fist on the post. But he's, what did he say out loud? It, was, it sounded funny on TV. I figured you were there in person. Did you hear what Moose shouted before he punched the pole? I did hear him shout. I'm trying to remember. Oh, man, I can't remember what he said. I, I'd love to watch the clip again, but it was funny. I do remember it was, uh, God damn it, I can't remember what it was. I, did, I, I, I even popped on the, uh, when I watched it on Twitch, I popped at it too. I just can't remember what he said. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely watch it after we, we get off the air here and, and, and brush up. But uh, we went from that, Kyle, to uh, Knockouts champion Ty Valkyrie, giving her a health update after she was powerbombed off the stage by Killer Cross at Homecoming. Podcast style, headliner style. Yeah, it was headliner, wasn't it? She, uh, she said she'll be cleared for next week's episode, live from Mexico, where, uh, where La Vera Loca was, was made. And uh, she'll, she's laying out a challenge to Tessa Blanchard. Then we cut right to Tessa, who's backstage with Mackenzie, who this is probably, I think, Mackenzie's last appearance. This is the last time you see Mackenzie Mitchell, guys. That was it. Because she is done. I think she's moving on to the NFL or MLB. I can't remember what it is. But uh, very, very amicable departure, by the way. Goodbye, Mackenzie. Oh, we loved her. We'll I love. She was fantastic. One of we'll my favorites. so much. Oh, favorites. Those dresses. The dresses. Gorgeous. Beautiful. And you know what? She's somebody that so came nice. into a role that she really had no experience in. I mean, no offense. She just never struck me as like the person that got into the business to work in professional wrestling. I think she was working in like, you know, maybe sports broadcasting or something. Yeah. And she just kind of fell into the job. The job fell into her lap. I mean, that's just my assumption. I don't know. But, but from what I know, she's uh, she was friends with Dixie because they went to the same college. Oh. And she knew Dixie somehow. Because they went to uh, Ole Miss. Okay, that and, makes uh, sense. And Dixie brought her in because she was a sports girl, you know, and uh, that was it. But she jumped in so good, man. That's what she I'm saying. So like, good. she's the type of person that you would expect her to fail. But she came in and made the job her bitch and did such a great job with it. I'm going to miss Mackenzie. Hopefully down the line she comes back around. But, uh, I mean, I'm hearing rumors about uh, Melissa Santos. I mean, there's Alicia, Alicia Tout. I mean, there's this spot can get... Filled in, just like how we talk about the roster. I guess the announcers are just about the same in Impact Wrestling. Well, Melissa, I think, revealed that she is, uh, she's on. She was definitely on for Mexico. You know, she's Hispanic, so she, that, that really translates well. She's, you know, married to Brian Cage. That doesn't hurt either. So, uh, Melissa Santos is definitely on. So, I'm not sure if she's going to be on for outside of Mexico or, you know, the rest of the U.S. shows or what. I mean, I know Alicia's up there for Canada. See so, yeah, how she does. Yeah, I, I heard. Everybody said she's great, so um, I, don't, I don't watch Lucha Underground, so I don't know, but I'd like to uh, see how she does, man. But um, Sadly, Trent, go- I don't think anybody's going to be watching Lucha Underground moving forward. Uh, I hate to you know, brush up on rumors, especially it's not even Impact-related, but it is kind of Impact-related because that'll have a big effect on Impact's roster if Lucha Underground officially ceases. But there's Are been, they done? There's been tweets. Uh, I guess uh, you don't really pay attention to it. I mean, we're so big into Impact. you know, Things happen in other promotions, and... We sometimes just miss the news and don't hear anything about it. But uh, forget who it was. Uh, somebody was being held like in contract prison. You know what I mean? And uh, oh, uh, Evil East, right? Yes, Evil East. yes. And yeah. Joey Ryan uh, shed light on it. Uh, it just seems like, from what Joey Ryan said, that there's no future in sight right now for another season of Lucha Underground, and that sucks. That sucks for Lucha Underground's fans. And that sucks for professional wrestling as a whole, but it does not suck for Impact's roster. No, not bad for Impact's roster, but uh, that's a bummer. I didn't know that. So yeah, I heard about Ivelisse talking about her contract. She wanted to go to other places. I'd love for her to be an Impact. I think Ivelisse um, got screwed on gut check about five years ago. I'd love to see her come back and try it again. Oh, yeah. But uh, all right, man, we go from there. Tessa is backstage with McKenzie. She starts going nuts, starts attacking production workers. Uh, Gail Kim comes in, tries to pull her off, and uh, Tessa says it's all Gail's fault that she's no longer champion, and she brutally beats down Gail. Uh, she goes nuts, chokes Gail out really bad, and uh, Sanjay and Scott Demore come in. They suspend her right on the spot. They're like, you're done. You're suspended. This is bullshit. This can't go on. So they they cut her down, man, and um, 
they they cut you know the the scene ends with Gale getting uh, checked up on, and again my buddy referee Nate Speckman is one of the guys who comes and attends to her with along with uh, I think it was Scott. That's the, the if you see the guy who runs over and checks on Gale, that's net referee Nate. That guy's gonna be you a big what? big name one day. Nate has got a bone to pick. He's got a he's got a reason to be pissed. Uh, how come Trent? At the beginning of the show, he can get attacked. Johnny Bravo could get dropped on his skull. Those guys aren't even wrestlers. They're just referees. They're officials. How come they can get attacked by Brian Cage? Tessa rightfully attacks Gail for what Gail did to her at the pay-per-view. And she gets suspended. Brian Cage needs to be suspended for what he did to Johnny Bravo. Or did Johnny Bravo have that coming? A lot of people are on Johnny Bravo's case about that count. That's the thing. That's that's what it is, Kyle. People aren't happy about that count. They're pissed off at Bravo. They needed to get that redemption on Bravo. You know what, Trent? I feel like we have professional wrestling's uh, next great heel referee in the making. We haven't seen one of these since WCW Nitro back in the day. Johnny Bravo. Yes. Johnny Bravo can become the modern Nick Patrick of Impact Wrestling. Why not? Oh, gosh. Tell me why not. I mean, he has a good look for it. Johnny Bravo was a wrestler, for sure. He was he was definitely was a wrestler back in the day. So Bravo knows how to work. And um, I, I don't know, man. Heel referee nowadays. You know, if we if we had more time, if we had another show, if we had another show, you have one, you only have like four referees, three referees. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, one of them being a heel, man. I don't know. I don't know, Kyle. Lounges, I'm, I'm, I'm how do you feel? Forget me. Forget Trent. How do you feel? Are you with me? Or are you with Trent on this one? Let's hear. Yeah, it. let me know, guys. Let me know what you guys think about that one. I, I, I'm, I'm not feeling a heel referee today in, in today's day and age. But hey, if you guys are ready for it, it's been 20 years. So let's see. Maybe, maybe we're, maybe we're due for a heel referee. Who knows? But. uh all right, Kyle, we go from this. X Division champion Rich Swan taking on Trey Sands the Miguel non-title match. This was a excellent, excellent uh, X Division match, dude. This is what the X Division was about right here. This match exemplified completely what uh, what the X Division means. It was so cool to see a good one like this in the, uh, in the asylum. I love both these guys. Personally, I love both these guys. I'm a huge fan of them. I, I know them from AEW. Great dudes. And uh, I loved it, man. It was a lot of back and forth. Uh, Rich defeats Trey with a 450, takes the win. Retain. It wasn't. It was a non-title match. But I, I'm kind of curious, though, Kyle. I wonder why they made it a non-title match. What no, was it? Why? In the, in the um, beginning of the match, uh, in the entrances, uh, Josh immediately said that this is a non-title match. Uh, when Rich was coming out with his X Division Championship, you know, down the ramp, and the, as soon as the camera was on the X Division Championship, Josh says on commentary, "This is a non-title match," and. Uh, I don't think Trey deserves one. He just lost at the pay per view. Give him some time. He's gotta he's gotta work his way back up before he gets another shot at the gold. I think. I always thought it was weird when you would just have a champion fight in a non title match. It's like you already got the belt there. Why not make it? I mean, if he's gonna go over anyway, <laughs> why not make a title match? But I guess I can see why for the sake of story. Yeah, and he we doesn't. We could go back to what was it? Uh, twenty sixteen in the Lagana and Corgan years where they just had like title matches every single week. Every yeah. week. It was weird. The only title match that should happen every week is a TV title match. If they bring a TV belt back properly, that was the idea, man. I used to love when Nitro would kick off with a TV title match, 10-minute time limit. It was excellent. It was like, hey, you know, you get a title match. You got a featured guy every week, TV title. You change it regularly. It goes back and forth. You make guys with it. It's such a good title. It's a goofy-sounding name. I always thought the TV title sounded kind of weird, but it's a TV era. I mean, House of Hardcore has a Twitch title. You know, now you got to roll with the times, you know, right, Kyle? I think they but should the, steal that idea. The Twitch, Twitch, uh, the Twitch championship. We already did a television championship in the old regimes in TNA slash Impact. Let's get the Twitch championship. We should steal that one. It. Lift that one from Tommy Dreamer. It's an in, he's U- got an indie. It's not even on TV. I think a U.S. title would be great, man. A U.S. or... or uh, but a Canadian championship. Yeah, why not? You're a Canadian company. You know, the, Nor- the North American... The North, the Great White North title. How about that? Yeah, no. I, if I were Impact, I would keep investing in Canada. I mean, that is technically the home of the company now, in a way. It is it's the parent is, company. Uh, uh, Anthem Sports is located in Toronto. I was, uh, it was even seen that the uh, president of Anthem was uh, Len Asper. He was, uh, he was tweeting during the show. He was, he was interactive. He was watching on on TV. So hey, that was pretty cool to see. Like, you know, 
he wasn't like as over. Oh, he wasn't doing it as much as like like Dixie would. You know, Dixie was a real good tweeter. She'd be really in there. But uh, Len was kind of, you know, he was like, oh, that that cage mid roll claw was sick. <laughs> and I looked him up, and he's he's a young guy, man. Len Asper's a cool, like, cool younger guy. So you know, Trent, it's been confirmed though. Speaking of Canada, that Impact is coming back to the Re- Rebel Entertainment Complex. Yes, this year. Yeah. Now, Trent, I got a question for you. Since you know, I'm pretty stupid. Uh, how, how hard is it for us to get into Canada? Like, what is the? I've never, you know, gone across a border before. Uh, what is that process like? How do, how do we get into Canada? Because to be honest, Trent, I think the Rebel the Rebel Entertainment Complex is one of the most uh, like beautiful, beautiful. Like, wrestling venues. Uh, those beautiful. episodes of Impact in the Rebel Entertainment Complex were special. They had this such a cool uh, atmosphere. I want to go there. I want to go there, Trent. How oh, do we yeah. get into Canada? What, what channels do we have to go through? Passport. Passport. That's it, man. Just get a passport. Don't look like a scumbag. Don't have problems. You get a, you get a harder time coming back into the U.S. I'll tell you right now. Wow. Me every time I went into Canada, it was a breeze. They welcomed me in. They said, "Come on in. We're happy you're here." My own country says, "Wait a minute. What, what the hell were you doing in Canada? You got any guns with you? you got any drugs with you? Wow. What are you doing up there, huh? Wow. What's going on? Third degree to come back home. Harder to come back into the U.S. Wow. The U.S. is tough. Can't going into Canada. Have a passport. Tell them why you're going. You say wrestling. They they love it. They say, "Come on in. Have a great time." They're great. The Canadian border is fantastic, Kyle. 100%. I think totally. uh, the Total Nonstop Impact podcast should take a Canada field trip this year. What do you say, Trent? I would love it. I think, did they give a date? Because I know they're going to Windsor on March 22nd and 23rd. They're going back to the um, St. Clair College in Windsor, which is about four and a half hours from me, Ooh. right right across the river from uh, Detroit. So uh, I'm going to try to make that one. Awesome. But I don't know when they're going back to Rebel, but I'd love to make it. Let's see if you can I work it out. I think it's April. I could be wrong, but I think it's April. And, yeah, I know exactly what direction you're about to go into. I was about to go there myself. Let's get the GoFundMe going. Let's <laughs> send Kyle to Canada. I, uh, Fund I my trip. Go, I was not going to go beg our listeners for GoFundMe money. But hey, if Kyle wants to do it, go right ahead, guys. Well, Trent, I have uh, an announcement to make here on the show. Go ahead. You're speaking to a man that just got employed with a good job. I'm going to have money. Job. I'm going to be You're able to afford the, my own trips. Working for the government, too, aren't you? So, Trent, <laughs> Kyle, your favorite Impact podcaster, is now officially a part-time school janitor, right? As I'd like to say, artist of the custodials at the my artist. old high school that I went to. I'm yeah. back. I'm back in high school on the other side of the messes. But I have a good job now, Trent. There's benefits, retirement, good pay. I'm going to be able to afford my own trips. I can go to Canada. <laughs> What's this part-time shit, Kyle? What the hell are you doing with the rest of your time? No, I mean, it's, you know, I have to, I'm like, you know, I got to take what I can get. They don't just, you know, slap you right right. in there. It's like 12 months of uh, paying your dues, wrestling style. Not even, uh, I don't even have a full week of uh, dates yet. You know what I mean? More of a substitute gig for like 12 months. Then they put you in full-time. At that point, I'll start Hardcore janitor. Yes. Hardcore. He's hardcore. Yes, yes, Uh, absolutely. You're working for the, you're working for the government, Kyle. How do you feel? This is, this is a, this is a government job. The benefits, oh, well, the benefits. I think we're in a baby. government shutdown right now, so this probably isn't the right time to uh, get a job like that. But I don't know. It's the school system. It's the local school system. I don't know if it's like that, but uh, from what I know, uh, I'll be working in about a week or so. So eh, I won't be broke anymore. We won't have to ask people to set up GoFundMe's for me. Guys, I'm gonna put out the laundry. Let's let's get a round of applause for Kyle here. Congratulations no, on getting let's your job. Let's take the over under on how long it takes me to come back here with the story about how I screwed the job up and got fired. Six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks till you're back here asking for a job. Oh, no. Six weeks. Oh, six no. six weeks till you're asking for people to say, hey, can you guys uh can you guys Patreon our our podcast every oh, week? No. Uh, I, man, I wonder if we should Patreon just just to make just to keep you. Just to keep you honest, Kyle. I don't know, man. I, I mean, can't <laughs> ask these people for money. Yeah, we're just kidding with all that. But, uh, yeah, no, it feels but good to be passport. a functioning member of society, you know, a contributing member of society. Well, get damn, get that passport. Let's go to Canada, Kyle. Let's go see them at Rebel, man. Yes. But, uh, yes. Don't be like Rich Swan and be indecisive because Sammy Callahan comes out after the match, offers Swan the OVE shirt that he says is sold out from the – shopimpact.com and he had to go to the merch table and steal this one and he says you know he basically tells him look do do what's right this is your destiny join us like i've like i've told you to ove's out there with sammy swan looks over at the shirt looks really confused 
Again, I can't stop thinking about the storyline as well now, the proposed one that we have in mind. But uh, Swan looks at the shirt. But before you can make a decision, Kyle, LAX comes out, make their way to the ring, and our main event is about to get underway. It was LAX, the tag team champions, with Conan taking on OVE, Jake and Dave Christ with Sammy Callahan. Uh, these two had they, a lot of reference back to the uh, the Barbed Wire Massacre 3 that these guys had last year. So a lot of thing about how basically these guys are, they had history, which is always good. They've, uh, they know how to work together, which is always good. It was a, uh, it was perfect. These guys, it wasn't a cold match. It was, they had some warm up on this one. Uh, what'd you think? What'd you think about the match being announced? I mean, I know we saw a lot of these guys last year. What'd you think about it happening now? I'm cool with it, man. Uh, I know, like we are always talking about, there's going to be people that complain about everything. So I'm sure, uh, say everything, Trent. Everything. They're going to complain about everything. That, that's, I like that. We can do live sound bites. Forget the sound bite. Just have Trent say things in place of sound bites. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. There's always going to be the people that complain. And I know some people online are like, oh, we've seen this before, blah, 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 blah. No, we have two great dance partners having a little bit of a reunion out there. You know what I mean, Trent? Yeah. It was awesome. Rich Swan, come home. This is where you're supposed to be. We love you here. LAX, stay out of our business. We're going to take care of Rich. But nope, LAX comes out and says we're getting involved. And it's uh, it's like the, the dance The dance is underway, Kyle. The you know, dance is underway. I have to make a very important uh, note here, Trent. Uh, can you agree with me here? Can all the loungers agree with me here? LAX, this current carnation of LAX, uh, Santana Ortiz, they are the strongest booked Impact Wrestling tag team in the entire 16, 17 year history of the company. The most strongest book, booked, the, the most victories, they're just presented so strongly every single week on TV. Can you agree with that, Trent? I, I, will, I think you're right, uh, especially with that win over the Lucha Brothers at Homecoming. I was like, man... They really don't give these guys uh, any dips. The only other two teams I can think of that were this strong was AMW and Beer Money. Really, man, I don't think anybody's been booked this strong since uh, I think LAX probably, I mean, they're the longest reigning tag champs, so probably I think they're top spot, man. Yeah. Top spot and is going to go to LAX. I've been making it a point to disagree with our uh, Impact Lounge uh, brother, Adam from the Adam and Rose show here. I disagree with him every chance I get. I think breaking up LAX would be the stupidest thing in the entire world. I think it would be dumb. I think it would smell like old TNA. I just think it would be an awful idea. These guys are the best tag team in the entire world. For real. For real. Like when I yeah. interviewed Ortiz with Adam, Ortiz said on the show, he made the point how him and Santana together make the perfect wrestler. You know what I mean? They both complement awesome. each other perfectly. Uh, strongest book tag team in Impact Wrestling history. My favorite tag team in all professional wrestling right now. But Trent, give OVE their props too. Give them their props. Oh, I don't, I've known both these guys for years, watching them for years in Chicago. Uh, they used to be known as the Irish Airborne. They are shoot brothers, guys. They, they are brothers, so they got that, they got that psychology down. One of, the, one of the best teams. Uh, they were the, one of the best kept secrets for years. So they went to TV, and I'm so happy they got TV. It's great that they're out to a, a more national scale. But uh, dude, Ovi, Jake especially is such an agile wrestler. Uh, Dave's a great base. You know, I mean, they, these guys have a great system down. They've been doing it so damn long. You're talking veterans, man. But in this one, LAX comes out on top. They take out Ove. It was a non-title match. So they, uh, you know, you got, um, it wasn't, I don't know where they're going with it. I mean, obviously it's, it's feeding a little bit, uh, it, it blended off the rich Swan Sammy thing, but, um, I don't know. I don't know if it goes further. I don't know if you, you even push this any further, but for the time being great match, these two have great chemistry though. And absolutely. It doesn't need absolutely. to be anything else. Uh, they ran nah. into each other backstage last week. Uh, quick yeah. little story beginning to end. Quick little story. Uh, quick little story. Makes yep. sense. Keeps things then, fresh. We go uh, after that match. You know, the LAX is backstage. They're coming back through the match. You know, through our through their through the curtain. Had a great. Uh, they're, they're happy about it. You know, feeling good. Lucha Brothers are there. They're kind of like congratulating them on the win. They're like, oh, thanks, brother. Hey, we're so happy. Everything's cool. Blah blah blah. You know, everybody's kind of cool, and uh, everybody's pretty pretty happy about it. 
Lucha Brothers are just chilling, you know, really happy for their their boys. And uh, <laughs> and uh, they just <laughs> – this was great. They they end it off. The guys walk away. Lucha Brothers walk away. And Ortiz just goes, hey, if you guys don't want to do this again, let's dance or something. You know? and, and then Conan just goes, what? Ass beating. It was an ass beating. Oh, yeah, you guys are wanting an ass beating again? Let's we, we let's do, let us know. And Conan just goes, what? And they cut the show right off of that. I uh, just I ends th- with that dumbfounded look on Ortiz's face, like what? I, what I do? Just open mouth. He made he made the busy oh, bone so face. Good. Did you see that video of busy bone recently? Not recently. Uh, there's a video of busy bone. Uh, it's a funny thing all over uh, the internet. It happened recently where uh, I know it's weird to you know talk about pop culture on an impact podcast, but uh, I thought of busy bone at the end of the episode here because. Ortiz made the exact same face that Busybone made recently. Uh, okay, so Busybone got himself into some trouble recently. Trent, uh, I'm a big Busybone fan. I love Bone Thugs. Oh, me and too. Harmony. He was my favorite Bone Thugs guy. Dude. Oh, everybody's favorite. You have to love, love. Busy. But so recently, uh, Busybone and the Bone Thugs and Harmony have been uh, having a bit of a resurgence because they have some hip hop beef with some other group called Migos. I'm not into the new mumble rap stuff. Not for me. Don't give a fuck about Migos. But uh. So Busy Bone was on Instagram Live with uh, a couple of his uh, uh, personal firearms, was pl- playing with a gun, you know what I mean? And uh, in the video, at the very end, like, you know, Busy cuts a promo. He cuts a wrestling promo holding a gun for like 10 minutes. And at the very end of the video, Busy Bone's wife knocks on the door and she's like, oh, oh, the-, the police are outside. And Busy just looks at her with his, his mouth open and he just has the exact same shocked face that Ortiz has at the very end of this episode. A little weird thing <laughs> sprinkling in there, but it, it just totally made me think of it. Ortiz just That's with that, that shocked face. So what does that I, mean, though? What does that mean for LAX and uh, the Lucha Brothers next week? Oh, dude, th- this is I, I said it back when people were really puzzled by the um, by the result at Homecoming. I said, watch, this is a, there's a rematch in Mexico. I guarantee you're going to get a rematch in Mexico. I think that's where we're leading with this. We're going to Mexico next week. I think this is where it's going, man. It's only fitting. I mean, you you, tear, you get these guys, let, let them loose in Mexico. We're the, we're, the Lucha Brothers are freaking legends already. Dude, let them loose. Perfect. That's where you that's where you have some fun. When you get that crowd, Cerro Miedoing all day long. You know, that's that's it. Yeah, let them but go took, for two out of three falls. You know what I mean? Uh, Give them let, a 30-minute, 40-minute main event. Absolutely. Let it happen. Absolutely. Let them go all out, man. This could be real fun in Mexico, especially if that crowd is hot. Let them let them rip. I don't read spoilers. I don't want to know shit. Nope. So keep them away from I, me. Yeah, but that was it, man. That was the show. They uh, they're Mexico City next week. They closed it off. The little little there's a little promo that got released about Cross aiming to annihilate Johnny next Friday, where he's going to be taking Johnny Impact on for the world title in Mexico City. So we got a great show coming up this oh, week, yeah. man. And Don Callis is excited for the tequila and margaritas. He said that somewhere in this episode. He's he ready. Loves his tequila. He loves his drink. He oh, yeah. loves his drink. He loves vodka, but I guess he's ready uh, for some tequila as well, some margaritas. <laughs> That's right. He does love vodka. He, he mentioned that. That's right. That's right. Uh, but that was it, Kyle. That's Great a January episode. 18th episode. I think we can wrestling. both agree on the match of the night, though, Trent. Uh, Moose and Cage, huh? Moose and Cage, 100%. Definitely. Moose and Cage. Definitely. Giving them the vote. Giving them the vote. But uh, that was it, guys. We are, uh, again, I am, uh, Kyle, I'm still reeling from a great uh from last week's response from the lounge. I hope you guys can keep it going this week. Please give us that response again, guys. I'm really uh I'm really humbled by it. Kyle is uh too he's he's Kyle's too tough to be humbled, but he is deep down. He's got a heart down there somewhere. No, know, he trust me, Trent, uh, that uh, near death experience in the car uh, might have humbled me a bit. Y- you might find a, a nicer, friendlier Kyle here on the show oh, from man. here on out. He's working. He's been. He's been. Uh, he's been humbled. He's a kinder guy. Uh, 2019 is a year of change for. Yeah, gonna cut back on the partying this year for sure, Trent. There you a big go. Big wake up call. Big wake up call. Big wake up. All right. Well, I'm glad. Listen, Kyle. Are we ready to do plugs, or you have anything else you want to add to these people's uh, these people's day here? You know, Trent. Here's what I want to do. Uh, just plug real quick. Let him get out of here. Let us go. But what we're gonna do is I haven't listened to it yet, Trent. You didn't even mention it here on the show. Uh, we were saving it as a surprise here at the very oh, end. Shoot. We agreed on that before we recorded. At the very end of the show, we're gonna let this one out. We're gonna reveal this, unroll this on our loungers and tribe members. Trent, you watch this show with your father, your old man, daddy, and you That's recorded right. some stuff. You have a little bit of audio recording of you interacting with pops about the episode, Trent. I do. I do. So my dad is not a wrestling fan. Uh, he's watched with me 
a little bit and uh you know here and there I, I, you know i lived at home we watched a little bit he was uh he watched impact with me you know we watched back in the day we saw some old stuff too but never a big wrestling fan but he's uh he's been at my place as i mentioned last week he's nursing uh he's got a badly broken ankle i got no stairs at my place i live in a condo so i said dad until you get your cast off you're gonna stay with me and i said since you can't really run away from it you're watching impact on friday night with me so we hung here, we watched Impact, and then I got an exclusive uh, couple-minute reaction from my dad. This is going to be his podcast debut. I've been trying to get him to do something on, on the air where, in some capacity, this is my dad's uh, podcast debut. This is a raw reaction from a guy who doesn't watch every week. This is a, a podcast re- uh, response, a show response from my dad, Manny Zuberi. Awesome. So, Take Trent, it. here's what we're going to do. We're going to play that right here, and we're just going to close out with it. And uh, next week on the show, we'll react to it. The loungers will react to it. I'll grab a couple highlights, maybe play it in the intro there. But let's uh, wish everybody a good night, a goodbye, and close out with words from Papa Zubiri. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. But as always, you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell a coworker, tell your mother. Please rate, review, and subscribe, guys. We need all those numbers. We really appreciate all the interaction. If you got a second, let us know what you think on all those channels. And uh, you can find this podcast on social media at We Talk Impact on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just type in We Talk Impact, and the total nonstop impact uh, social media accounts will come right up on all of those. But that's about it, guys. We're going to kick it over to Papa Zuberi, and we will see you guys next week. Good night. Peace. Beware of the force of nature. It's something about animal behavior. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with my dad, Manny Zuberi. Dad, how you doing? Doing good. So I made my dad watch Impact Wrestling after a long time. Maybe the last time you watched, I think your favorite, Tara, was still wrestling. Remember yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he was a big fan of Tara. We used to go visit her at her restaurant in Chicago. <laughs> she liked uh, taking pictures with you. Yes. I know I think that was 20, sure did. 2013, probably. Yes. 2014, maybe, at the latest. Yes. So he has not watched Impact Wrestling since 2014. And uh, he's been here nursing a bad wheel with me, hanging out at my place. And I said, Dad, since you can't run away, you're going to have to watch uh, Impact on Friday night with me. So we watched it. I'm the captive audience. <laughs> yeah, literally captive audience. I kept you here. There you go. So uh, what would you think? I, I the show was good. I I really liked it. The the new wrestlers are wonderful, well maintained people. I think you were saying that these guys look better than you ever, ever remember. They did. They sure did. They're very well, good bodies and good plus physique and everything. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like they kill each other so badly. You know, gee, the techniques are great, but this is really a real real wrestling. People get blood, blood coming out, yeah, and all kinds of stuff going on. This is incredible. I was impressed, but it, it I couldn't take it sometimes. One time, when the guy was hitting his head again and again and again, I was so <laughs> so nervous about that. Looking at the blood coming out of somebody's head, you know. I think so, you're you're a little sensitive because you you're you're hurt yourself right that's now. That's right. Maybe that's one of the reasons. <laughs> Absolutely, it was it was kind of a little crisis for me. And you've never been a wrestling fan. You have never really watched it. The only time you watched it was with me. You went with me uh, in 2000. You went to attend your first wrestling show, uh, WCW Spring Stampede 2000. These words probably mean nothing to you because you probably don't know what the hell it was. But you were there with me. That's right. I was. And we had a not knowing that you were witnessing some some major stars at the time. It, it was not that violent before. It's, it's like yeah, it's kind different of violent now. right now. Pretty different uh, right now. Yeah, I mean, listen, they're using great techniques. If then, I mean, it seems like they're hurting each other tremendously, but if they're not hurting, like they said, it is. It is not actually a sport of hurting. Yeah. But then, then uh, uh, that's a miracle. <laughs> yeah, well, it's they do, a miracle. They do get hurt. I think uh, the guy you really liked was um, this guy Brian Cage came out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good-looking guy, muscular guy. Absolutely. He said, this guy looks like a star. A star. He, was, he did a great job, and he finally won. 
Yeah. One of the one of the one of the shows you won. Yeah, he said, "Look, I'm I'm impressed he remembers that yeah. everybody. Very, He's uh, I good. didn't think he would remember." Yeah, no, 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 he did. He did a good, good job. So, Dad, the magic question is that my listeners here are gonna on the on my uh, on the Impact Lounge, the loungers we call them, and uh, we call them the Impact Tribe. They're gonna ask is, "Are you gonna watch again next week?" Well, I don't know about next week. But if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm with you, if I'm with you. And then I might be forced to watch it. How about this? How about we make it a point? At least once a month, you maybe try to come and watch with me. Well, I'll, I'll try my best. But right. I got my schedule. You know, yeah, you're a busy like guy, that. too. I'll you're, do my best for you. You're a pretty popular guy. You uh, you have more social life than some 20-year-olds out there, I know. I try not to be busy. You're a pretty popular guy. In my old age, I try. Yeah. No, you're a pretty popular guy, Dad. I, I can't take it away from well, that's you. That's very nice of you. Thank you very much. So this is your first uh, appearance on a podcast. How I, do you think? How do you feel? I like it. You were pretty... I'm really enjoying it. You were pretty... You were pretty... Um, Hesitant, you said, well, I don't know, should I rehearse or what? Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea how the podcast are run the first time. It's a radio show. A radio show. You don't have to rehearse anything. Yeah, there you go. We Perfect. just go in, me and Kyle, we just we have a sheet, we have a format, and we just we wing it. Very good. Listen, I'm learning something over here. Maybe listen, I'll do a podcast on my own one day. I, I think you should. Well, you know, listen, you got, we, got, we, got a, we got amazing listeners who listen to us here every week. I think they'd love. That's you got fantastic. some great stories. Fantastic! You tell me a thousand or twelve hundred people listening to you guys. every week. We fantastic! Got an amazing group of people listening to. It. I think uh, we can very maybe. Very proud of you, Sonny boy. Thank you very much. Very proud. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you know, my my co-host Kyle is is, uh, is a big fan of yours too. He's always Hi, asking. Hi, Kyle. You're wonderful. You know, you're trying to tell me about you about you from time to time. You know, it's wonderful that you guys have such great friendship. Thank you. And thank you for checking up on me with him from time to time during yeah. my. Uh, crisis over here. Yeah. Or like you said, tragedy. It's tragedy. <laughs> He's injured. So, all right. Well, listen, I'll sign you off. I kept you for a few minutes. I told you no more than five minutes, exactly four minutes and 54 seconds. Uh, I, usually at this time, Dad, I, say, I tell people to plug their 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 uh, social media, but you don't have any social media. Right. You have a Twitter account, which you don't even I use. Don't, I, I don't use. <laughs> I don't start now. I've decided that. Well, you can follow, you can just ask me and I'll tell you how he's doing. How about okay. that, everybody? All right, Dad, thanks for joining us here on Total Nonstop Impact. Thank you very, very much for giving me the opportunity to get you, know, get you with, to go on your, on your show. Thanks. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you. Thanks a lot.